Hey y'all, so it is time for September favorites and I do have a few fails that I wanted to mention. A few new products that I've tried that I have not been over the moon about, honestly. Um, also, major fail that has me wanting to check into a hotel for a couple of days. I think a squirrel has died in my ceiling. It's, it's pretty awful in the heat of the day. I'm pretty sure it's a squirrel. We know that we have squirrels up there. They keep finding like new ingenious ways to sneak into our ceilings and attics. They're like the smartest freaking squirrels I've ever seen. So dead squirrels aside, there is one other thing I wanted to mention and that is if you are a US citizen over the age of 18, please make sure you are registered to vote. We have big midterm elections coming up here soon. Seriously, so many people have had that right taken away from them. People have been incarcerated. So if you have the opportunity, if you have the ability, please use it. Why is this hair just out to get me today? Anyway, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. It doesn't matter what state you're in, it'll give you info on how to make sure you are registered. And speaking of hair, does anyone else shed like a freaking dog in fall? Every autumn, right when the weather starts getting a little bit cooler, I swear like a quarter of my hair falls out every single year the exact same time. It freaks me out. I know it grows back. I know it does every year, but it still really freaks me out. Plus, it's just kind of gross. Anyway, I think it is fairly normal. Everything that I've read or been told, it's not that big of a deal. It's just weird to me that I shed like a freaking dog every year. All right, so as always, let's start with the books that I've read this last month. And I just bought a new one last night when I was laying in bed trying to fall asleep because I had nothing new to read. And I love it so much that I've already read like 80% of it. I have not been able to take my eyes off of it. I was even trying to read while doing my makeup today. I'm telling you, that's how like into this book I've been. And it's just like a little romantic chick lit book. It's nothing that great or whatever. I just, I find it interesting. Anyway, it's called That Month in Tuscany by Inglis Cooper. And like I said, it's not historical fiction, which is normally my genre. Uh, I thought it was kind of like the title and then the book jacket and everything. Uh, that's why I clicked on it, but I downloaded a sample and actually ended up really liking it. No. Yet, I can't have anything. Can't film a damn video. I cannot have five minutes to myself without someone yelling and screaming in the background. I live in a freaking kindergarten. Anyway, so that's what I'm currently reading that month in Tuscany by Inglaf Cooper and I'm enjoying it. So besides that, I did read Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. Definitely not a new book. Of course, the movie ages ago, 20 years ago, probably at least at this point, uh, was based off this book. I loved that movie as a child. I used to love Sandra Bullock. I loved Hope Floats too. Anyway, so needless to say, book and movie are very, very different, but it is most of the time. And while I like the book and I love the overall premise, to be honest with you, I really don't connect with her style of writing. She is kind of the omniscient narrator where she's kind of like looking over everything, the people doing their things and she's describing what they're doing. And I feel like I have a hard time connecting with that um, versus just direct dialogue, you know, so-and-so says, this person says, they're just like talking back and forth, interacting, developing the plot and the story and everything. Um, I mean, there is some of that as well, but overall she's kind of like looking down and describing what people are doing. And for some reason that just kind of takes me out of the story. I, I don't exactly know why, and it was still a good book, um, but something about it I just qu couldn't quite like dig into. I just felt taken out of the story multiple times. All right, and then besides Practical Magic, I actually read another book that has since been turned into a movie, and that is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. It's now a Netflix original or exclusive movie, and I did watch the movie, and it was really good, and I would highly, highly recommend it. Um, mm, the actor, the man who plays Dossie Adams in that movie, like, oh my god, I am so DTF for him. Anyway, though, the book was really good, too. Again, book and movie, very, very different, but they're both really cute stories. In fact, it kind of piqued my interest about the Channel Islands, about, like, Guernsey and Jersey. Um, I don't know. They seem, and if you know, if you're from the area, please enlighten me, because from the outside, they seem very British in language and also in culture, which is kind of surprising considering how close they are to France. I mean, they're practically right there um, off the shores of France, so it's just 
interesting to me. I'd love to visit. Anyway, so the book is actually a book of letters, which at first I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna be into this, but by the end, I, I loved it. It was so good. So we do actually have a couple more non-product favorites that I wanted to mention. First one is a podcast, which I actually have mentioned here before when they did their first season of the podcast. Uh, they're on their second one now. It is called Slow Burn. I believe it's by Slate. And yeah, they're on season two. Season one was on Watergate, on Richard Nixon and Watergate. Season two is on Bill Clinton and kind of focuses on the um, Monica Lewinsky scandal, although touches on some of the other scandals during his presidency as well. There were a couple like Whitewater. Anyways, it's very, very unbiased. I guess if anything can be unbiased. I understand this is not everyone's cup of tea. I, I totally get it. But I never thought it would be my cup of tea either. Like, I don't give a shit about Nixon. Like that was years before I was born, but they have made it so incredibly fascinating and they tell it in a way that I've just never heard before. It's not just facts, like they make it come alive. And so I would encourage anyone who might be the least bit interested into listening to it. It is a great podcast, very well researched. And I think they said um, at the beginning of the podcast that with the political climate the way it is today, like it's so important to look back at our history and see where we've been. Um, any, anyways, I, and I do very much believe in that. So I have been so enjoying it. So yeah, Slow Burn, it's a Slate podcast. All right, let me get a couple of the fails out of the way. Now this one is just a sample, but I got three days of use out of it. So I feel like I got a pretty good experience with this foundation. So this was the Marc Jacobs Shameless Foundation. And and I was in the shade 230, R230, which matched me absolutely beautiful. And as soon as I put it on, like, you know, first hour that I had it on, it was amazingly beautiful. Great coverage, beautiful finish, just looked amazing on the skin. Um, you know, it was there. You could definitely see you had makeup on, but um, pretty, pretty skin-like finish. It broke down. <laughs> so incredibly horribly throughout the day. I mean, just disgusting, cracked and patchy and went heavy and greasy. It was really unfortunate. And from what I hear, I'm not the only one with this experience. And it's really surprising too, because it is a pretty matte foundation. So you would think something matte would have to be long lasting, right? Like you think it would be designed for oily skin in mind, but apparently not. Um, I guess I should be glad because it's an expensive foundation, um, but I was really looking forward to trying it. I love the packaging. The shade range was actually pretty good. They had shades that matched me well, which Marc Jacobs has not done in the past. They've not been great about real pink cool tone um, undertones foundations. And so, yeah, I kind of was kind of bummed out, especially because it looks so beautiful right when you applied it. All right, so this next one, I'm gonna have to explain myself, okay? Because I, I never do this but I was at TJ Maxx uh, to pick up Sugar's toys for one. I always get her toys there because they're so much cheaper and she rips them to shreds in like two days. So I'm not gonna spend 10 bucks on them. I also get her dog do bags there because they have the biodegradable ones in the bulk sizes for usually really cheap, like four bucks for like 10 rolls. Anyway, so I always take a look at the makeup to see what they have, but I don't pick up any from stores like that because it's usually old as shit and I've seen it firsthand. So come Companies that we represented clients of ours specifically a skincare company I have seen them liquidate old expired stock that was sitting in an unair conditioned warehouse in Texas no less um, I've seen them liquidate stock to stores like Tuesday morning Marshall's TJ Maxx etc etc and also to subscription boxes too and I personally just don't want any part of that a company is not going to liquidate stock which is what they do when they sell to stores like TJ Maxx um, they take pennies on the dollar of of what the initial price would have been worth if they could actually sell it if it wasn't expired or if something went wrong with it. Um, yeah, they're not gonna take pennies on the dollar for products that they can get for full price elsewhere. They're selling them to try to recoup some of their losses because they can't do anything else with that stock. Or in the case of subscription boxes, it, it's basically PR. They can't do anything with the stock anyways. They can't really make a lot of their money back on it. So they put it in boxes and it's like free marketing to get their, their name and their products out there. Anyway, so long story short, I, I don't buy makeup from places like TJ Maxx and Marshalls and things like that. Other things, you know, like if you want to pick up makeup brushes or stuff like that, 
totally cool. And occasionally they do have products that have been discontinued that aren't necessarily old, they've just been discontinued and liquidated. And in that case, you know, it's, it's not old, it's not expired or anything. Although I would add, I get tempted by that and that's not necessarily the smartest thing because if I was not the least bit interested in it for full price for the years that it was at Sephora, why do I all of a sudden want it now that it's half price? I don't, I'm just being sucked in by, by the sale. Anyway, so long story short, they had subculture at TJ Maxx, which I do know is not old, but there is a reason why these are there. So I don't know if this was like the very first batch of them or something and they found some problems. I don't know. But basically it was 20 bucks and I was like, you know what, for 20 bucks, like I'll have some fun and play with it and see what's up with it. I obviously I didn't buy it, you know, when it all came out. So I thought like 20 bucks, I just want to see what the big fuss is about, right? Like it's not that big of a deal, 20 bucks, whatever. It was an impulsive decision on my part. And actually one I do kind of regret um, <laughs> because yeah, it's, it's not good. And I know that there were so many theories, a lot of them founded, some unfounded about what went wrong with this palette. But I mean, really to sum it up, it's just, it's not a great palette, it's not. And frankly, I'm very, very shocked that it made it past um, ABH quality control. I truly am. Anyway, so like I said, it was 20 bucks. I thought, why the hell not? Like, maybe it, maybe it'll work for me, and if not, I'm gonna have fun playing around with it, I, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I've, I've really, really struggled. And to be honest with you, the metallic shades, the shimmery shades have been the best performing, at least up until today, which I will get into, because today's the first time I used Adorn. Um, and it like, if you can see, I have shimmer up to my freaking eyebrows. It definitely migrated and did not stay put. Um, also, it was a lot harder to get on, swatched absolutely beautifully, it did not go on so well. Anyways, though, the shimmers, I'm not having that problem where they like totally hard pan up or anything like that. They actually perform fairly well for me, with the exception of Adorn, which performed okay, just, you know, not, not great. But yeah, definitely the darker shades is not good. Anyway, I'm not trying to go through and rehash everything here. Um, I just thought I'd briefly mention it because I've been playing with it for the like the last week or so and it's been a bit frustrating. <laughs> so last couple of things I wanted to talk about are two skincare products from the brand Context and both of these were sent to me from the brand for PR FYI. So I received these right at the beginning of September. So I've been using them for about three or four weeks somewhere in there and I have to say, I really really like them in fact I'm even kind of bummed that I have fallen in love with the moisturizer so much because I'm trying to save money <laughs> you know what I mean and it's not incredibly expensive but it's not drugstore either and now I have to repurchase it because I enjoy it so much it is a moisturizer that has SPF in it that doesn't break me out which is incredibly hard to find so anyways I have been testing out the context intensive daily moisturizer with SPF 15 I do really like the whole aesthetic of the brand very clean and minimalist approach I dig it the finish on it is super nice too and that's super rare to find with a sunscreen moisturizer they do sometimes have like a greasy feel texture to the skin or give like flashback make you appear gray this almost feels like a primer like it dries down to a powdery finish which i really enjoy so besides the moisturizer i've also been testing out the vitamin c all day eye cream and this one is more like a gel it's not a cream um so it's not like deeply deeply moisturizing which i do i do prefer typically something a little bit more moisturizing but i do really like it as well it does have some silicones in there so it kind of gives that like prime feeling to the skin which does make your concealer go on quite nicely um, but FYI there are silicones anyway so I'm really impressed with the two products that I have tried they have other products I'd really like to check out so we will see again I wish I had like 20 bottles of this moisturizer to move with me because um, it's so hard for me to find sunscreen that doesn't break me out. All right, y'all. Well, that is pretty much everything I wanted to mention for September favorites. As always, I want to know what you have been up to this last month and what you've been loving or if you have any fails too. I always love to know. I will see y'all in a couple of days in my next video. Bye, y'all.